Uh, I'll try and give you a brief overview, some of which you've already just seen on the video, and then some actual examples uh, from hard experience, uh, life experience. So, Universal Peace Federation is a global alliance of people like yourselves, individuals and organizations dedicated to building a world of peace, a world where everyone can live together in freedom, harmony, and cooperation and with prosperity for all. So part of the UPF mantra is mutual prosperity, creating win-win situations where we all uh, experience this same freedom, harmony, and uh, so on. Uh, so some of you, many of you will be ambassadors for peace. And this is also then a global alliance of leaders from all levels and strata of society who align with the core principles, the universal principles of, of uh, UPF. So we try then to bring people together, as we're doing today, virtually and in person. Uh, and um, our kind of overall goal, as I was discussing with Imam Tamiz on the way down, is this one family under the one divine creator, under the one God. The feeling that we are brothers and sisters. And what are the core values in that family? Then we like to try and promote strong, healthy families, uh, interfaith harmony and cooperation, a culture of service, which uh, I've been quite involved in myself, particularly with young people, reconciliation, forgiveness, and working together in partnership, and affirmation of spiritual principles, uh, particularly through practical action in real life, day-to-day -day life. So we could summarize these uh, principles, these five principles. Uh, one way, there are many ways of looking at the divine, at the creator, at our origin, at God, but we would uh, emphasize the aspect, if we are to become one family, then God has this aspect of parent. Uh, God is our parent, our true parent, we say, and we try to encourage everybody uh, individually to develop a true parental heart, even young people to try to encourage them to develop this true parental heart that thinks of myself and the other, me and the wider world, uh, our common uh, destiny together. We believe that we are essentially spiritual in nature, that marriage is, uh, that's not so clear, is it? Sorry, on the screen. Uh, marriage is not just a social institution, but a sacred institution, and the family, therefore, is a school of love where we develop and experience all the different aspects of love in the extended family. Uh, God's ideal is to live for the sake of others. And interreligious and international cooperation are essential to world peace, uh, particularly in the current context. Can you see them now? Sorry about that. That's good. So point number five has a key role to play in resolving uh, many of the current issues. Uh, that we see in our society. Uh, key areas of focus are then peace building, as we just mentioned, strengthening marriage and family, peace and security, service and the culture of peace, and the U UN and NGO where um, UPF has uh, attained general consultative status because of the breadth of our activities in so many countries of the world, in so many different areas of society and human endeavor. These you saw on the video. So the International Summit Council for Peace, current and former heads of state, uh, parliamentarians for peace, uh, first ladies for peace. Uh, my first lady came down with me this morning. Uh, <laughs> thanks to her, we all uh, came down from Birmingham. Association for Peace and Economic Development, focusing on business and the economy. Some of you will have heard this uh, young man here speak uh, in Korea. And uh, people from all walks of life and all persuasions. Uh, IAPD, the International uh, Interreligious Association for Peace and Development. And IMAP, IMAP uh, for media. And finally, oh, in case you missed this uh, little picture here, then I've enlarged it here so that you can see our Secretary, International Secretary General Tom Walsh uh, with Taj Hamad 
and the, uh, I think the Egyptian ambassador to Italy, meeting with Pope Francis uh, in 2019. That was July 2019. And uh, Pope Francis already knew about our organization from his uh, home country of Argentina. And uh, he was very happy to spend uh, 30 minutes or so discussing and sharing our common ideas and understanding. So finally, Academicians for Peace and uh, the Association of Arts and Culture for Peace, which is particularly good for uh, many of our young people. You can see a picture there of the little angels. So finally, in this little section, then, as I mentioned, our mantra, interdependence. I think we're all even more fully aware of that over the last couple of years. Uh, our mutual prosperity, my happiness and your happiness together, and the values that we share, universally shared values. So now just a few uh, actual examples, practical examples, the theory uh, applied into practice and from local level to the global level. And uh, I hope you'll forgive me for indulging in, in examples where I've been involved myself. Uh, I like to speak from actual life experience. Uh, it makes it a little bit more authentic. Uh, just to reiterate these areas of focus, then peace building, marriage and family, peace and security, service and the culture of peace, and also I've included peace education that I'll mention uh, in a few minutes at the conclusion. So one example of uh, peace building is coming together. Actually, this is for a, a peace service at a wonderful Islamic Institute in Birmingham. Some of our friends who've come down with us will have been at that event. And bringing together the uh, Minister of Religion from uh, that organization, the Secretary of the Birmingham Council of Faiths, the leader of the Jain community, a former MEP, Anthea McIntyre, uh, former Lord Mayor then standing in the middle, Christian minister, people from all uh, walks of life in this beautiful uh, venue. And also I like UPF for its advocacy, giving people the opportunity to, to speak and represent their faith tradition, uh, their culture, uh, their perspective on life. And here so we have interfaith prayers from all our faith traditions, and then the uh, wonderful Dr. Michael Balcom, who may join us, I think, this afternoon. Uh, he had the opportunity to speak. And his conclusion was, peace starts with, not me, but peace starts with B, B for Birmingham. <laughs> uh, many of us here have been involved in the Middle East Peace Initiative, largely from 2003 to 2008. Uh, Robin and Margaret, uh, I don't know how many times Robin went to the Middle East, probably 20, 30 times, bringing groups of people from all over the world and doing together what we couldn't do separately. So this picture here shows uh, Auntie Margaret and many other ladies in Al-Aqsa. There were Jews, Muslims, Christians, old, young, men, women, everybody was in Al-Aqsa. It was electrifying. We could only get there on our peace walk because we were people of the Abrahamic faiths. So the Jewish uh, security, Israeli security was keen to stop us because of the large number of people walking through the narrow streets of Jerusalem. But the rabbis in our group came to the fore and negotiated with their own security to allow us to continue. And then our relationship with the imams in Al-Aqsa allowed all of us together to go into Al-Aqsa. So we can do together what we can't do separately. And then we invited several people from the Holy Land to come to the UK. This is uh, Bishop Ria, then Bishop of Jerusalem, uh, coming. And uh, Tamara and Ali from the uh, Bereaved Families Forum, Parents Circle and Families Forum. Incredible people who came to help us in the UK with our peace building. Strengthening Marriage and Family, uh, the Interfaith Peace Blessing, which has taken place in this venue many times. And in Birmingham, this was one of our largest gatherings uh, in Arya Samaj. And we had Muslim brothers and sisters in a ostensibly Hindu environment. Because in Arya Samaj, they don't have icons and statues. So everybody felt comfortable uh, to be there together. Peace and security uh, were discussed uh, a couple of years ago in 2020, January, at the World Summit. And that was the most arguably electrifying gathering I've ever been to in terms of the number and variety of people. I think 
I don't know if you can correct me, maybe 5,000 people 5, or 6,000 people, from top to bottom of society, all walks of life, all religious persuasions. It was incredible. And we may hear more about that later. And here you'll see largely men on this picture, but actually there were, it was real woman power. Uh, <laughs> Margaret was there, my wife was there, and Dr. Sakina Yakubi, who received the uh, Sunhak Peace Prize in 2017, was there. Incredible lady. So inspirational. And finally, turning to service and education, uh, then the power of youth. Uh, this is a project we did in East Birmingham back in the late 90s. And as a result of this project, uh, creating a, um, a playground for mothers and children to enjoy in the local community. And this young lady uh, was so inspired that she went back to her homeland of Slovenia. Uh, three other people went with her from this project and they did a project to follow up the following year in Slovenia. It has this multiplying, powerful effect. In London, recently, then uh, Robin, Margaret and Tim Miller have organized uh, a project, I think this was on a rooftop in London, amazing, where young people came together and did all kinds of uh, gardening and environmental work. And we're hoping to do the same in Birmingham, not on a rooftop, but actually on terra firma in an eco park uh, in that same uh, part of Birmingham, Small Heath, that you saw the previous picture from, and to bring together uh, young men and young women to create a peace garden in this eco park in uh, early August. And finally, uh, my last two minutes, uh, peace education. So important. Again, I was discussing with Imam Tamiz on the way down that our young people grow up with the right kind of education, not just academic education, formal education, but peace education. How to become not just a good scientist, a good nurse, a good doctor, a good whatever, but a good person who is a scientist, who brings all their qualities and values into the public space as whatever. And in the early 1990s, uh, after the collapse of the former Soviet Union, uh, we went into, the, into Russia and developed this curriculum uh, with pedagogues and the Ministry of Education, and it was disseminated into thousands of schools. But unfortunately, conservative forces then came back, uh, and uh, including, unfortunately, the um, Orthodox Church, and didn't want new organizations, new ideas in their neck of the woods, and we had to withdraw. If that hadn't happened, I'm not sure we would have the current situation in the Ukraine, actually. That's my firm belief. Uh, 2018, January, an incredible summit in Africa where we offered our character education curriculum to all the leaders of, of African nations at ministerial level, even though there were some, some current and former heads of state there. This person here speaking, you can't see him very well, but he's the state minister of education from Nigeria. He was brought by our representative, UPF representative, George Ogurie, to that meeting. And we offered freely online uh, our character education curriculum for them to consider back in their home country. And this is now happening as we speak uh, in Nigeria. Uh, we're discussing with uh, head teachers, various organizations. This is George here with uh, his mask on at one of the first discussion meetings where teachers came to assess the curriculum. You'll see here head teacher, head teacher, head teacher, head teacher. Uh, it's going forward in a very powerful way and we hope it'll be disseminated and spread throughout Nigeria, where there are real tensions, particularly between, as you may know, the Muslim and Christian communities. And finally, uh, these are the actual people who came to that meeting. So we're very hopeful there. And also, I haven't included it, but in the West Bank and Gaza and uh, Israel, it's also uh, a version which has been written in Arabic. The same uh, education curriculum, but in Arabic and contextualized for the Middle East, is being uh, trialed in hundreds of schools with Palestinian young people. And uh, I don't know if David might mention something about that when he speaks from his uh, vast experience in Syria and the Middle East. Very hopeful, but very much needed in our troubled world. So that's the theory and the practice. Uh, I'll finish there, half past 11. Thank you very much.